So, I bet you thought the only thing that a mouse was good for was moving a cursor around and clicking on things. Well, after today, you're gonna see your mouse differently. Stay tuned. Every computer today uses a mouse as its primary input device. Now, I know, before the comments come, there are exceptions to this rule, like POS systems that use a touchscreen interface. But for the most part, on a desktop computer, you're gonna be using some type of mouse as your primary input device. Now, for some people, this might be a touchpad, or on a notebook, or even a trackball. But ultimately, you're gonna have some form of mechanical device that's used to move around a cursor and click on things. But I bet you, you didn't know that your mouse was capable of a lot more than that. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says change product key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office 2. Now, on with the video. Now the first mouse, at least as we know them today, on a desktop computer was released in 1984 on the Macintosh 128. Then the following year in 1985, Microsoft released Windows 1.0 that used the mouse as a primary input device. Now at the time, I'm sure this really upset Apple, but they couldn't complain much because honestly the mouse was invented in the early 60s and was ultimately a product of the Xerox Corporation. That's right, both Apple and Microsoft stole the idea for the mouse. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm kinda glad they did. Because I don't know what computers would look like today without the mouse. However, with that said, most people's knowledge of how to use a mouse ends at moving around a cursor and clicking on things. Most people don't realize how many shortcuts and features your mouse is capable of. Now today, we're not gonna be talking about touchpads or trackballs. We're gonna be concerning most of our time with the standard two button traditional mouse. And with that said, the first tip kind of applies to most people, but not all people. You see, the standard two button mouse comes in two popular configurations. It's either gonna be wired or wireless like this one. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with the debate on which one is better. Arguably, a wired mouse is, is more accurate because it has a higher polling rate because it's honestly connected directly to the computer. This obviously makes its latency lower. However, wireless mice have came a long way. For me personally, the lack of a cord makes the slightly higher latency worth it not to be tethered to the computer. And also, if you use a high-end mouse like this Logitech G305, the odds are you're not gonna notice much difference in latency. But that brings us to our first tip. Many people plug this little receiver right here into the computer that's a good distance away from the mouse and they wonder why their mouse is performing so bad. If you're suffering from a mouse that's jittery and doesn't move across the screen smoothly, then chances are this little receiver here is probably too far away from the mouse that it's communicating with. Now, this Logitech mouse right here has an effective range of 33 feet according to its documentation. However, I would never recommend running it that way. The documentation for this mouse recommends the mouse be within 20 centimeters from the receiver. That's less than about eight inches away, that's that far away. Now, if your computer has a USB port that's right next to where you use your mouse, then you're probably in good shape. But chances are that's not the case. Your receiver is probably much further away. So for this tip, what I recommend doing is getting yourself a six foot extension cord for your USB port, or longer if your computer's longer away. Plug this extension cord into your computer and then route it in a way to where the end of it is right behind your monitor. Kind of similar to 
this picture right here. This is an example of where the USB receiver on this computer right here is located. As you can see, it just barely pokes out right in the middle of the ultra wide monitor. This places the receiver roughly 15 inches away from the mouse. And for another example, this is my own personal system. And as you can see, the USB receiver is right behind the monitor. This places the receiver right about the same distance as the other computer. Now, while I exclusively use wireless mice, I still want them to perform. And using this tip has made me really happy with the performance of the wireless mice that I have. So, now that I've shown you how to get more performance out of your wireless mouse, let's jump on the system and I'll show you some ways you can really take advantage of this mouse. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are in Windows 11 and the first tip, this is one that you've probably seen me do a lot on this channel. So, essentially I'm going to open up my downloads folder and I've got a compressed file right here. Now, you could just grab the file, drag it over and drop it in a new location, but as you can see, it moved the file because obviously my downloads folder is in the same drive as my desktop. So when I click and drag, it essentially moves the file and doesn't copy it. Let's say I want it copied, I don't want it moved. So instead of clicking your left click button, click your right click button and then hold it as you drag the file somewhere else. And then when you go to let it go, it'll give you all of these options to either extract, copy, move, or create a shortcut. Now. You can see move is highlighted because this is the default action. If I want it copied, I click here, and now I have a copy here and a copy here, and it only takes a single mouse movement. However, one of the ways that I like doing this, go ahead and throw this in the trash here again real quick. I'm gonna drag this out again using my right click button and then dropping it here is to use the extract function. So when I click extract, what it's gonna do is bring up the extract wizard in Windows. I can push the extract button here, and it extracts everything in that zip file into a folder with all of the pictures that I currently had. Now, like I said, if you've been watching this channel for a while, then you probably already know about this shortcut because I use it constantly. This is a great shortcut when you're manipulating files from within Windows. Typically, by default, if you're dragging a file from one drive to another drive, it will copy that file to the new drive. However, if you copy it from the same drive to another folder on the same drive, then it will move the file instead of copying it. Just like you saw in the example here. But by using the right mouse button, you drag the file, it allows you to choose whether or not you wanna copy or move the file, overriding the Windows default. However, for me, like I said, the way I get the most usage out of this shortcut is used by extracting archives. It speeds up the extraction of archive files to literally a single mouse movement. Now, let's get to the next tip. Okay, for the next tip, we looked at the right mouse button before. However, most mice have a middle button that a lot of people don't realize. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this web page right here. As you can see, if you like my t-shirt, here's where you can buy one. So on all mice, most mice at least, have a wheel. And if you roll that wheel, it rolls up and down a web page. However, if you push on the wheel, it's essentially a third button on most mice. So if we go into here, and as you can see, I, can, I have all these different different links right here. If I right click, I can hit open link in new tab. And as you can see, it opened it in a new tab. However, if you just click on the link with your middle mouse button, as you can see up here, it's opening all of these links in a new tab. And as you can see, I can do that considerably faster than right clicking and hitting open in a new tab. So by using the middle mouse button, it essentially, it opens whatever you're clicking on in a new window. However, it goes even further than this too. Like, let's say for instance, you want another browser window open. So if you come down to Chrome down here and click the middle mouse button, it'll open a new browser window. And depending on how many times you click it, you can open that many browser windows. And this works with all different applications. We can do the same thing with File Explorer and we can get multiple instances of File Explorer opening just by clicking the middle mouse button. And then, of course, you gotta spend all the time. It looks like it takes a lot longer to close them than it does opening them, but it still works pretty well. Now, this tip might seem like kind of a beginner tip. However, the middle mouse button is actually a very useful button that I don't think a lot of people take full advantage of. Ultimately, the whole point of a shortcut is to make something easier or be able to do the same task with less steps. This fits that definition perfectly. 
Now, let's move on to the next tip. And this one, you're really gonna like this one. So essentially this one right here is a really simple tip. So oftentimes you have a browser window open. So we're gonna open up a browser window here real quick. We'll go back to this web page right here. And essentially you might have something on that browser window that you wanna copy into your console or into your command prompt. And to do that, all you gotta do is hold down control and shift at the same time while moving the middle mouse button or the wheel on your mouse. And by doing that, as you can see, you're essentially making your command prompt window clear. And you can go ahead and type whatever it is that you wanted to type by copying it from the web page below. However, the same thing can also be done. So if we go to CMD here and we open up our command prompt, it's exactly the same thing. Control shift and then use the mouse wheel and you can make that one clear too. However, when you close it, if you go to reopen it again, so we're gonna go back to CMD, and as you can see, it goes back to its default. Now there's no way to change the default in the regular standard command prompt. However, you really should be using terminal anyway. And with terminal, you can change the default. So if you go right here to this little arrow, you go down to settings, and then you click on the default, the command prompt. You can do this in PowerShell and Azure Cloud as well, but we're gonna be showing it in command prompt. And then scroll down until you see appearance. And then from appearance, you wanna scroll all the way down to right here where it says transparency. And then you can pull your transparency down and you can also enable an acrylic material. Let me show you what that is. I typically scroll mine down to right about 75 to 80% is where I find to be really useful. However, if you go right here to enable the acrylic material and then hit save. Now, if we go over to our command prompt, as you can see, it's got that kind of that foggy acrylic look. So this is a great look if that's what you're going for, but it's not as useful. So if you want it to be more useful, you would go down, same to the transparency, uncheck the acrylic material, hit save, and then you have a clear command prompt. Now, this has to be one of my favorite mouse shortcuts because for years within Linux, I've been running my console windows at 20% transparency, which is essentially 80% visible. It's the same setting that we did on this one. I think this is a necessity or a necessary feature within a console window to be able to copy commands from a web page with your console window open blocking the web page. I mean, it seems like the perfect solution to me. However, until about a year ago, I didn't even know that this was possible in Windows. In fact, if you search Google on how to make the command prompt transparent, it tells you there isn't a way to do it. So apparently Google doesn't even know that this is possible. It is unfortunate that you can't change the default transparency in the regular CMD window. However, like I said, you should be using terminal anyway, and you can make the transparency default from within terminal, just like I showed you. Now, let's move on to the next step. Now, this is one that I don't know why Microsoft disabled. However, do you remember back in the Windows 10 days how you used to be able to grab a window, shake it, and then have all the windows minimized? Well, unfortunately, Microsoft took that away. Let me show you how to turn that back on. If you click on Start, you go into Settings, and then from Settings, you wanna go into System, and then scroll down to Multitasking. And then right here, the title bar, Window Shake, if you turn that on, then essentially what it does is if you have a bunch of windows open, all you gotta do is shake one of them, and it'll make everything disappear. And if you want it all back, you can go ahead and click on your window again, shake it again, and it brings everything back to the way it was before. Now, if you had something that was previously minimized and you do the same shortcut and then you bring everything back, it will leave the things minimized that were minimized at the time. However, there's another shortcut that you can use too, and I have to mention this just because we talked about arrow shake. But if you take your mouse, you move it down to this corner and click, it minimizes everything. And if you click again, it brings everything back. So it kind of does the same thing as arrow shake. So I guess Microsoft didn't take it away completely. However, I really like that feature. I think it comes in really handy. Now, this is a feature that, like I said, came originally in Windows 10. For whatever reason, Microsoft decided to disable it by default in Windows 11. I'm not sure why, because it's a really useful feature that I think should be enabled by default. However, I think the primary use is to hide things really fast if someone walks up and honestly, the button in the bottom corner, that shortcut usually is a little bit better for that purpose. The benefit of this shortcut is it keeps one window open while minimizing all the rest of the windows. The other one just minimizes everything. 
but at least it keeps you safe at work. But with that said, let's move on to the next tip. Okay, this next one is a really interesting one, and I actually found this one while doing this video, or at least doing the research for this video. So if we click on start, and we go ahead and type in control panel, we're gonna open our control panel up, and then from control panel, what we're gonna wanna do is go into our hardware, hardware and sound, and then we wanna click right here on this link that says mouse. And this gives us our traditional mouse interface. However, if you go to the bottom right here, this click lock, if you click here, it turns on a feature called click lock that I honestly never heard of before. And essentially what this does is once I hit apply, if I click the top right here and hold it for a period of time, it moves the window around without clicking the button. Here, let me show you. So as you can see, I'm not touching the button and you can see the window right there moving around without any button press at all. Essentially what this does is it takes the click and sticks it to the window so you can move the window down. See, like that, I actually use the arrow shake to get rid of stuff. So it makes arrow shake work really well, but I think this is a really neat feature. Honestly, I can't decide at the moment how I would use it, but it's, it's still kind of cool. Now you can also come in here, all you gotta do is click once in order to disengage the click lock. But if you come into settings, you can also change what kind of duration you have to click in order to click onto something. Now if you have this too short, it might get a little annoying because it grabs stuff way too fast. However, if it is grabbing things too fast, you can always go to a longer one and then hit okay. And then you'll have to hold longer for it to actually click onto something. And then it won't click onto something if you just hold it for like a short period of time. So this is a feature that you can adjust the settings on. For me though, the default settings where it was right about in the middle seem to work pretty good. Now this mouse feature is something, like I said, I didn't even know existed until I sat down to write this video. Believe it or not, I was looking into something completely different and was in the mouse settings at the time and saw that feature. Apparently it's been a feature in Windows since Windows 10 and I've never heard of it before. It might be because it doesn't seem like, honestly, I can't see many instances where it would be helpful. Now, since we're talking about mice though, I've just gotta say that up until recently, I used the absolute cheapest peripherals available. The quality of mice and keyboards wasn't really important to me at all. Unfortunately though, that has completely changed for me now. Not only is the quality of peripherals important, but it can change the entire way that you use your computer. Check out this video right here where I go through the basics on mechanical keyboards. You might be surprised at how in-depth this topic is. Be careful though, once you jump in, it's hard to get out. But as always, you guys have a great day.